What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about NEO. This is the company that recently IPO'd here in the US, a Chinese luxury electric vehicle maker that's been receiving a ton of hype in the media, even dubbed as the Tesla of China. I've gotten a ton of requests to make an episode about NEO, so that's what I'm doing today. I've had a chance to look at their filings, read into the company. So we're gonna start by going through the business, then we'll go into the financials, then we'll go into the valuation and whether I think it's trading for a fair price. So first, the business of NEO. Like I said, they're an electric vehicle maker based in China. The reason why they're called the Tesla of China is because unlike most electric vehicle makers in China, they're going for the luxury segment. NEO is a very new company, only four years old. They actually unveiled their first ever sort of working car two years ago, which in 2016, which was this crazy supercar called the EP9, had crazy specs, built up a ton of initial hype for the NEO brand. Then in late 2017, they unveiled their first sort of production car that people, uh, you know, everyday consumers in China could buy. That is the ES8 aimed squarely at the Model X. This is a huge um, a seven seater SUV, um, you know, luxury car is also priced at about half the price of the Model X in China because, you know, Tesla builds all its vehicles here in the US, exports them to China. They're subject to mass amount of tariffs. So at the end of the day, because, you know, Neo is selling their cars cheaper and doesn't have these tariffs to the consumer they're selling their car for about 65 or 75 thousand US dollars versus about 150 thousand US dollars for the Model X according to their their filing here as of the end of August they had still about 16 thousand unfilled reservations on the books assuming a selling price of about 70 thousand USD that's almost a billion dollars worth of backlog for this ES8 car for Neo so they have generated some real hype and now the ES8 is actually starting uh, sales they began production of that car in June of this year have been ramped it steadily delivered and produced just over a thousand cars in August so that's ramping nicely now an interesting tidbit here which they include here in like almost the, the beginning of the filing here is that they say they aren't actually manufacturing the car so this is where Neo's business model starts to differ from Tesla's um, unlike Tesla who you know is vertically integrated they even build the batteries for their cars they also you know have that massive factory in Fremont where they produce all their cars um, you know Neo is, is is a very different business model they're not actually operating operating the factory, they partnered with this company, JAC, who's actually building the cars for NEO. So I think that's a very interesting tidbit. Back to the business, NEO has actually already announced its second production car, which will be unveiled in late 2018, selling in mid 2019, which is the ES6. So this is a five seater, sort of more compact version of the ES8. And so, you know, by this time next year, it looks like uh, NEO will have two cars on the market, the ES8, the bigger SUV, and then the ES6, the smaller SUV, both selling exclusively in China for now. That being said, the company does want to start selling its cars in the US and Europe eventually and go global. And the fact that I think they IPO'd in the US is a very strong hint that I think they're targeting the North American market in the long term. So now let's talk about why this business is very, very different from Tesla. First and biggest difference is that they're not vertically integrated. Tesla, like I said, does all their manufacturing. Neo does not. They outsource that. And I believe that could be a huge disadvantage for Neo in the long term because their cost structure is super, super bloated. They report their financials here in both RMB, which is the Chinese yuan, and the US dollars. Um, so I'm going to be talking in US dollars just because that's easier. Um, so they produced about $7 million in revenue um, in the first six months of this year. But as you can see, they're gross profit on that $7 million in revenue was negative $23 million. Let's say you buy a car for, you know, $60,000 or $65,000 from Neo. It's costing them at least right now about $250,000 to build that $60,000 car. So that's not a profitable model at all, at least at this scale. Now, it is important to note that Neo thinks their margins will improve dramatically as they increase, but at this level, Neo is losing a boatload of money per car. Um, and if we move further down, the loss from operations here is pretty massive. Neo lost about $505 million in the first six months of this year. Um, so if we take a look at, at actually like a chart of Neo's financials, you can see just how ugly this is. Um, I mean, just through the first six months of 2018, as I said, lost over $505 million. You can barely even see the like little revenue they generated. So, uh, you know, my biggest takeaway from looking at NEO, and this is such a fascinating case study for, for us Tesla investors, because this is the first time we've really got to look under the hood at the, the full financials of a purely electric vehicle startup, which is basically what Tesla is. And as you can see, you know, the car business is incredibly difficult and expensive and complicated. NEO is making Tesla look like such a bargain and streamlined operation on every single level. I mean, for NEO to be losing hundreds of millions of dollars like this would, would make a lot more sense to me if they were 
were actually building the cars, but the fact that they're not even building the cars and they're still, their, their cost structure is still looking this bloated is sort of a huge, huge red flag. You know, they're just an off the, you know, an off the cuff prediction here. You know, I'm thinking Neo is going to have to be selling, you know, 10,000, 20,000 or 30,000 cars per month, a 10, 20 or 30 X increase in production to even get close to profitability. So I think that's just something super important to keep in mind is Neo is so, so far away from ever making money. So now let's talk about the valuation. According to the snapshot I found in the F1, it looks like there's going to be about a, a little over a billion shares outstanding uh, now that the IPO is completed. Um, so Neo, as I'm, as I'm making this episode, trades at about $8 per share with a billion shares outstanding. We're looking at an $8 billion US market cap for Neo. So Neo is trading for $8 billion. You know, Tesla today around 300 bucks is trading for about $50, $55 billion. So Neo is actually trading for about, you know, one sixth the price of Tesla, which is a huge valuation considering the fact that they're only selling you know about a thousand you know 1200 cars per month in august tesla in the same month was selling about 20 you know 25,000 cars so tesla's production is about 15 to 20 x what neo's is yet they're only valued about five times more now that is because neo's growing faster the fact that the market is assigning such an you know an eight billion dollar valuation in neo when they have almost no execution they're way behind tesla's business model you know just shows how strong the appetite is for these future disruptors in the transport sector and what i will say you know neo sure they are losing a ton of money um they're very different from tesla and the fact that they have no you know global network of beautiful retail stores to sell their cars you know tesla's also been building a massive network of supercharger fast charging locations all around the globe these are huge advantages that i think would take you know years and years and millions hundreds of millions of dollars for neo to replicate that tesla is way way ahead on so neo has a very similar business model to tesla but it's just way way behind in terms of dollars spent and years in terms of execution but so i don't think neo is necessarily a tesla competitor at all especially given the fact they're not even selling in the u.s could, are they a threat to Tesla's China sales? Yes, especially given the fact that Tesla has these huge you know, tariffs in China. So I do think Neo represents a threat to Tesla in China on some level, but overall to Tesla, not really, because they just haven't even started selling in the US or Europe. The second thing is here is Neo is so, so unprofitable that I just think they're gonna have a hard time really scaling and going all out on this unless they can really convince shareholders of the long-term vision. You know, Neo raised about a billion dollars in this IPO. They wanted to raise closer to two billion originally. So my guess is Neo's gonna be consistently coming back to the capital markets, needing to raise more and more money, you know, much like we saw Tesla do um, earlier in its business model. But I, so I will say, you know, Neo looks really, really expensive. Um, you know, they're only doing probably tens of millions of revenue now selling cars. They're worth 8 billion. Like this makes no, no sense unless you're believing way, way longer term in the vision. I, I, I don't think Neo's valuation, like it, it just seems absolutely absurd for me. Like the co company is only four years old. So I will say if you're betting on Neo now, like you're literally automatically assuming, you know, a 10, 20 X in production to justify anywhere close to the valuation they're trading at today. But I will say Neo does have a couple things going for it, which I actually think is an interesting to highlight in that a, you know, they're building a car company from the ground up with this vision of cars need to be electric, they need to be autonomous. I think that forward thinking vision is really, really smart. And the fact that they're just going all in, accepting the fact they're gonna have to lose hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, just go all into this new vision of the of what the transport industry is, is something that I couldn't say for Ford or GM or Volvo or Porsche or BMW, all these other, you know, legacy car companies who are dragging their feet in terms of the revolution. I think Neo is going all in. So on some level, I do actually think Neo is more of a competitor to Tesla than legacy auto companies. Additionally, they're backed by, you know, Baidu, Tencent, the massive Chinese company, a tech company that owns WeChat, owns about 20% of uh, Neo, so they think they have some really smart, you know, huge tech money in China that's funding the company. So this could give them, you know, a long, long runway for growth. Anyway, so that sums up my review of Neo. Um, I think the company, you know, is doing some exciting stuff. It's awesome to see a pure electric vehicle maker, you know, go public and for us to be able to see the financials, but it's still so early in their business model. They barely started selling any cars. They're losing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. I wouldn't get anywhere near touching the stock with a 10 foot pole just because I think they're, they, you know, the risk for war just doesn't make much sense. You know, if they have any stumbles on their execution, the stock could get cut in half or, you know, cut by, you know, 80% almost overnight and would still look overvalued. Um, you're pricing in so much incredible execution, which I just am not strongly convinced in because we haven't seen much execution from Neo. But the one number I would be watching for Neo going forward is going to be, you know, their production and deliveries. How many cars can they build and, and, and sell and deliver? You know, are they taking market share? How are customers reacting to the brand? And then I'm going to be following the financials here each quarter on the channel to see if they can improve because their gross margins um, are just absolutely 
absolutely atrocious and Neo is losing so, so much money. They need to start show a strong improvement there. I think investors are gonna get fed up quickly. Anyway, I would love to know what you think of Neo in the comments below. Also, if you like the channel, definitely check out our Patreon page and consider supporting there. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.